The first and likely most common prepay scenario come from online orders. So let's dive right in. I'm going to go into four for point of sale and do an S for search. At the top here, I'm using the log section and I'm leaving O for new online in here and pressing enter. I'm going to choose this first one here as an example. Right off the bat, you'll notice there is a new status and some new letters used. The rest of the order we want to read like usual, starting from the top, we're, we're noting that it's a pickup order. Um, in this case, it's a PayPal order. Uh, so whether the customer has checked out via PayPal or credit card, it works the same. So that is one thing to note about this new uh, system is that PayPal is a little bit different. In the previous system, PayPal payments would automatically post as payments on account for this customer. In this new system, that option has been disabled. So you will have to manually mark orders as paid by PayPal and you'll see why in a second. But essentially we need to work with this order and finish it off. And so we can't have the PayPal payment automatically posting itself. That setting should be automatically toggled off when you uh, change to the new system. But if not, uh, you can give us a shout. So let's start into this order like we normally would and evaluate the products. So we're gonna have a look here and see that we've got one thing that's in stock. So there's no mention of back order statuses or prepays or anything. We have stock of this, we have available on hand of this. So um, this one is a something off our shelf, uh, but it looks like we have a second item here that we don't have in stock. And so the prepay status is automatically being applied to it. It's kind of a, a hint here. In this case, we're gonna start off like normal and print a pick list. So this is where I would do a P for print, an L for pick list, and I would send that to my receipt printer. And that would uh, allow me to go to the shelf and find the book or books that are in stock and put that aside for the customer. So let's assume I've done that. I'm back at my desk and now I can proceed on with the item that needs to be ordered. So I'm gonna E for edit into the sale. What I wanna first do is actually change the status of this one. So in the old system, uh, you'd oftentimes keep this as a held sale or some stores would even pre-sell it into the negative on hands. So both of those aren't going to be used in this new setup. Instead, we're gonna use the B for back order function to toggle this item to a prepay. You'll see there's a new status prepay item and I'm gonna to toggle it so that I can sell this item now, but also book manager will not think that it's actually left the store, that it won't record the sale yet. And that's the beauty of this new system is that you can mark things as prepaid and tender it, but it won't mark it as a sale yet. It'll create another entry, another held sale through this process where when the customer comes to pick up the book, then you can finalize it and it will match everything up. So this is a much better system because it will report sales actually when they happen. It'll be great for forthcoming titles. So you're not selling things before their release date. That data, by the way, if you are selling pre-orders, forthcoming titles uh, before their release date, when we submit that data or when you submit that data to us, which then gets passed to publishers and distributors, they dis discard that data. They find it's useless. So this will also improve the industry, I think, as a whole because our stores will start reporting more accurate forthcoming sales numbers. Without diverging too far, I use that B for back order, toggle this to a prepay. You will see the status says prepay issued, meaning we're issuing a prepay for this. The color coding in Book Manager for the new prepay system is yellow. So if you see yellow, that indicates an active prepayment. On to this next one. We have a prepay issue with a question mark and it's in red because Book Manager is saying, well, you're wanting to prepay for this, but the book is not yet on order. It's similar to the old way of doing things where we could have hit V for back order and change it to BOS. And it's showing kind of the red one here. This new system is very similar in that it's showing a P saying you wanna prepay this, but the red one and the red status here is indicating this book is not on order for the customer. You may wanna look into that. I'm going to use the usual R for reserve to reserve this title. So I can reserve against an existing order or make a new one. In this case, maybe I'll just make a new one. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure all the information is correct like normal uh, and hit page down to save. 
Once I have R for reserved this item, you will now see that the red prepay status has gone to yellow. Uh, it is now detecting that yes, the customer wants to prepay for this and it's on order. That red one has also disappeared. The O at the end here uh, signifies that this is a prepayment for something that is on order. So the one above doesn't have the O because it's an in stock item. So the O again is indicating on on order. You also see now that when I'm doing this prepay status, uh, the total up top is actually reflecting what everything costs. In the old system, if I had changed this to a B for back order, the total only assesses what is available to sell right now, what you have in stock. So that was another big issue with the system is you had to essentially uh, do some calculations or rely on the number that was passed along from the web store. In this new system, you will actually have uh, a total here and we won't be using the on account. So at this point in time, what I would like to do is go right through to tendering. I, I could, if you know the customer was standing in front of me, I could scan more items and actually sell them on top of this. And they could purchase things that they're leaving with today as well as prepaying. But we'll discuss that in another example. In this case, this is an online order. So let's just go right to tendering. And it's coming up with a message. One item, our items are in stock. You should have these in hand. So that's telling you again that you had one stock item. You should have already grabbed it. Uh, do you need a held invoice for them? So you want to say yes to this. Create a held for future pickup because the other option is no, the customer is taking them now. The customer is not here. They're not physically taking them. I'm dealing with an online order. So in this case, I'm going to choose yes. And now at this point in time, we need to choose the payment method. So this is where we're going to select PayPal in this case, because it's a PayPal order. And I'm going to hit page up to finalize this. I don't need to print a receipt or, uh, and in fact, we're going to send a notification in the next step. Uh, but this one, we just need to mark the tender used. So I'm hitting page up and that's again, printing without a receipt. And it's telling me that one items were added to, as a prepay redeemed to a held invoice. So basically it's transferred the in stock item to another new held sale uh, and marked that item as, as a, the prepayment is redeemed. That one is basically zero dollars. It won't cost them anything when they want to come pick it up because they've already paid for it. It'll make sense in a second. So at this point, the sale is completed. The new online order has been resolved. Um, the log has been updated with a done taken status, but it's got a little note here saying one prepay redeem uh, has been added to this held number. So again, it's giving you a little uh, breadcrumb to follow if you wanted to see the generated held sale that was created automatically by this process. At this point, I would now want to send my customer a notification, letting them know that their payment was approved. Well, it was PayPal, so it was already approved when they checked out, but say it was a manual credit card or had to be run through Chase or Clearant, it would require you to do that first to verify their card went through. The notification will also tell them that they have something on order and that they've got something ready to pick up already. So if I hit P for print here and do an N for notice, it should assess it correctly. So these items are ready for pickup, all that the rain promises and, and it's marked as paid. These items are on odor, a mushrooms of British Columbia released to September 3rd, prepaid. We can look at this uh, by copying in the number here or by going to six for customers. But since it's right here in front of me, I'm just gonna click, right click to copy. I'm gonna search and go down to invoice number and right click to paste. And now when I press enter, I can view the held sale that was created. So this is waiting for pickup now. I'll, I'll put this book behind our pickup shelf ready for the customer. And this is gonna be sitting here for when, you, uh, when they come in. Now this uh, status prepay redeem uh, is telling me that this item was basically prepaid and advanced and it's being, it's being redeemed. So the yellow status is indicating it's still uh, active. It hasn't been finalized yet. Um, and the status here, the little R is again telling you that one uh, has a redeemed prepay. 
The log also has a little note that's automatically generated, more to come. That knew that there was one other item on order for this customer. We'd Part of that prepay process, we'd actually marked another one on order. So the log isn't just showing done or held or something. It's saying there's more to come. One prepay redeem items added from this original invoice. So it's also got a link back to the original finalized online order. So we can look back at that. Plus it's got a note showing one more on order. So this is all very helpful so that staff can glance at these and know exactly what's going on for a customer. One thing of note though, and this is a little bug that, or a nuance with the system that needs to be ironed out, is that the original pick list or held receipt that you printed to find this book, the barcode at the top does not match to this held sale we generated it or printed it on the original transaction. And so that has got its a different uh, transaction number. That little barcode at the top, if you are using a Epson or Bixelon uh, receipt printer, uh, the held receipt or the pick list has a barcode, but that barcode actually just scans for or codes for the invoice number. So that first pick list you printed won't go anywhere. This again is something we're ironing out right now. So essentially, if you do like those pick lists or held receipts with the barcode at the top, you will need to print a second one at this point uh, so that it scans right. So you just hit P for print, L for pick list, or H for held receipt, and that will um, have the right barcode. The next online order scenario to cover is when the order is to be shipped and specifically when the order has items that need to be ordered that are to be shipped. So let's do an S for search in the point of sale, O for new online, enter. I'm gonna select this new online order here and we can see here reading top to bottom that this is a order that needs to be shipped. Uh, it's being paid by a visa this time. So we've got a visa that we need to ring through. And we have our usual shipping ISBN zero popping in at the top with the shipping charge. If this order didn't have anything that needed to be ordered, so it was all in stock items, so say just these three items were here, technically at that point, if you're planning to just box everything up right away and ship it out same day, just deal with it, then we probably wouldn't need to do a prepay. We would just ring the customer's card through and then pack it up and ship it out. So it wouldn't need to be handled at a later date. But in this case, since we've got one item here that needs to be ordered, our policy at our store and on our web store is that we will only ship fully completed orders. So we don't partially or do partial shipments by default unless the customer requests. And then at that point, we they incur uh, shipping charges for each shipment. So in this case, ours is the more economical. We bundle everything together when it arrives. So in this case, we are going to want to use the prepay system because we're not shipping these three items right away. We're going to wait for this fourth item to come and then bundle it up. To deal with this, we're going to start just like before by printing a pick list for the items that are in stock. So I generated a pick list. I walk around the store, grab the items, make sure they're in my hand. Great. Now I can edit into this order here. This is a choice. This next uh, option or, or path here, it, it's not mandatory, but it's something that Mosaic Books is doing, our own store is doing, we find it very helpful. So the shipping ISBN zero here, technically you don't have to mark it as a prepay. You can just sell it um, because it's just, it's not a physical thing. You can take money for it now and not worry about it down the road. In our store's case, we like to mark the zero ISBN as a prepay because then it carries over to the held sale that will be created during this process, the held sale for these three items that are in stock and also that held sale that will eventually have the fourth item uh, added to it when it arrives and is received. We like this zero shipping ISPN transferred to that because it's a great visual reminder and indicator to our staff that yes, this is shipping. If you miss the zero ISBN, then your only indicator that this is to be shipped is up here under the VIA. This is copied over as part of the held transaction, but uh, any other inkling of shipping is not. So our staff would have to essentially see this up at the top, which they're, they're usually very good at, but having the zero ISBN there as well is very much in your face. It's part of the line items. Before they pack up an order that to, is to be shipped, they're oftentimes checking over the items, so it'd be hard to miss this. So we prefer at this point to use the B for back order function here and actually mark this as a prepay, just like we would with any other book. Now it's gonna complain about it not being on order, but don't worry about that. 
These other ones, we can hit B for back order and choose prepay. So B for back order, enter, B for back order, enter. So now I'm marking that I'm issuing a prepayment for these three items because they're not being picked up or, or leaving the store right this minute. And the last one here uh, is the one I need to actually order. Um, you'll see that we've put in a special hook for the uh, zero ISBN. So even though it's something we don't have in stock and it's not on order for them, it's not giving that red prepay issue question mark status. It knows, oh, you can sell this as much as you want. Um, it doesn't need to be ordered. There's no problem with it. So this one though needs to be researched. So I can use the comma for pub stock. I can do the R for reserve function. Uh, you can use O for order, but R for reserve is much uh, handier because it fills in the customer name and PO number from the sale you're working on. So if you didn't know that, R for reserve um, does a little bit of the work for you. I'm gonna page down to save. I've now got the yellow prepay issue on order status. So this one is all good to go. And at this point, my total should also be matching my charge, yay. So I can now proceed to the tendering screen and here we go. We've got the, the usual message. Three items are in stock. You should have these in hand. It's also again, ignoring that zero ISBN so it doesn't confuse you. Do you need a held invoice for them? So again, yes is typically your choice here for online orders because the customer shouldn't be there uh, while you're processing their online order. So they're not leaving with the books. So I'm gonna choose yes, press enter. And then now we're gonna choose the payment method. So this is where if you had the pin pad tender uh, and you had a connected device, this is where you'd page down here and uh, type in the number or have the number passed from the device. Um, or if you're doing manual credit cards, you choose the tender here. But either way, you need to ring it through your credit card machine. And then I do a page up. Again, page down if you want a receipt, probably don't need it because the customer's not there. And we're not sending a notice from this area. We're gonna be sending it from another one. So this is where I'm just gonna hit page up. It tells me that four items were added as a prepay redeemed to this held number. Great. If I do a notification on this one with shipping, P for print and for notice, we would just need to create a new template that is clear. These items are ready for pickup. No, these items are ready to ship, but are waiting for these order ones to arrive before we ship. And that's just our, our store policy. So this is where you may need to modify your, your templates or create another template. Um, our own template, ship when complete here, doesn't do it very well. If I choose uh, that one, it's not displaying the item that's on order. And if I choose the B for back order to show it, it's showing all the items that I have on order on my account, not just the ones as part of this online order. So it could be slightly misleading. So in our own store, we may need to make another template or I'm sure our staff um, maybe just edits this or has some sort of workaround. So this first part is just going over how to handle prepayments in online orders. We will be discussing um, in-store, or over the phone prepayments in the next video. Uh, we'll also be discussing the receiving end and also when customers pick up. But for now, we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, we'll discuss picking up and all the rest in more videos down the road.